What do you have to lose in the cost of the very risk? So, these tiles again, they don't come out of a bullet point anymore, not lately at least. They come out of my head, and I use the thumbnail that I make. This over there right now, the thumbnail picture. Uh, I probably used for it. I use the thumbnail to inspire the title, and the title becomes the topic, and the topic becomes the video. <laughs> See what I do there? But yeah, the cost of the very risk, and what is it? Well, you know what I mean. I'll probably remember in the title when I type it down in the video description, or whatever. Anyways, yeah, so, so something along those lines, and so that's the topic for here. And I'm going to just say that also, that you don't have to have. I don't have to particularly always have a topic because videos as controversial and philosophical as I'll get. I'll have any topic or any abstract idea be its own thing without needing to be a topic in this paradox. But I digress, not digress. Hmm. The cost of any decision you make, and I, it's not like I said this too many times before, I probably have in different ways. The cost of any risk you make will probably come down to uh, how you interpret it. Like, I, I hate the phrasing that calculated risks are better than any other random dangerous risk, because even calculated risks can be dangerous for one thing, and another thing is that uh, calculated risks are not are not risks themselves and to that nature. You could be smart about what you do, and not hard on any, but it's better to know that if if you're like me in any extent and you know that your your withdrawals and your volatility alike they can be pretty bad like i think like my, my withdrawal is pretty extreme but my volatility is, is low which means that only until the point where something goes wrong do i actually f feel calm and steady but when never when it, when it's only a le when it's leading to the point of potentially being wrong or even being a mis mistakenly thought of being wrong it still inhibits that fear and it, it pulls into that fear so in other words it goes into the fear uh i couldn't explain that any weirder but I'm more afraid of something possibly going wrong or even uh, being belayed as if it could go wrong than if it actually did go wrong. And that's the idea of volatility and withdrawal. Even per the understand myself test. I'm not trying to pull out too much on that, but that's a very inspiration for that. It's one of the direct inspirations for that. But the idea of risks and, again, calculated risks. I guess calculated risks would have a heart to know that there's not always a bit of a sold-off sold context from that, being sold through on that. But... Risks in general are very good for building character, and you also get to know when something's worth it. You know how I regress with that, the cliche of that sake, namesake, you know, and just how much risk costs, however, that comes down to what you're willing to sacrifice for what you'll get for it. But the, the wisdom that comes from that sometimes is that the idea that you'll have something to lose just to have something you actually, that actually matters to you, or something that actually is important. The idea that in order to get where you want to go, you have to have something to give up, and that sometimes that's it's a lie. Sometimes that is a lie, and that we make ourselves feel like the thing that actually seems to exist, even if it does exist, is something that we actually lose in order to have the thing we want and care about. And sometimes, even if it does exist, it doesn't have to actually matter to the point where it doesn't have to even be there. Even if that's still a metaphor, it still means that it doesn't have to be that valuable. And it's just a... You know that by how the things like the addiction, again, I'll beat this up over and over, how addictions lead us to believe that something we want to give up is actually going to still inhibit some kind of necessity in our lives, and that's that's what makes it an addiction. Is that you make it you you convince yourself that it's it, that's necessary or crucial, and the thing that you you find crucial in a non-literary way, which is the thing you desire, the something you can't live without, but you could literally live without it. It's going to be its own burden, and that's um you don't want to have to accept that regret. Even if it's a regret, if, if in some twisted manner, it's a regret to have lose the addiction, lose sight of it, and it makes you, it's, it's still scary even to successfully avoid an addiction or, or uh, not escape from one, but to actually uh, to defeat it in particular, it's scary to do that in particular. It's just someone who manages to r take the risk of going against their their biological desires for that one addiction I keep talking about, Pimo. <laughs> but no, I'm super interested. As I'll keep saying, the have to take that risk to do so and the cost of that risk is that they lose sight of something that they are gonna have to they inhibit something from their lifestyle that no longer can be a part of them and it will always be a part of them anyways to about to, for that spiritual sense but or even that psychological sense but it will always be a part of them nonetheless but the fact that they had to take that risk to, to figure out how to barricade away from something not escape it but to actually conquer it and, def and manifest the desires that you need in the meantime in their way to find that, when they're able to finally defeat that addiction, and instead go for things they care about, uh, not so much as its own illusion or distraction, but that's actually the way to do it. Hopefully, otherwise, if it was one, illusion or distraction.
but they go for things that they actually care about and go banter away from the ones that don't matter to them or should not be important, aka the addictions, which are bad or evil in any extent of that. Not necessarily evil, but certainly bad or stupid. Uh, and then you have, therefore, the cost of that risk being virtually nothing, whereas maybe it did cost something, but the cost was outweighed by the fact that you got the way you wanted. And that's what I'll leave you off with for this video, is that the cost of any risk is can be virtually nothing if the risk is so great that even what you reap from the reward is not going to seem risky in the first place. But you can you can batch off the cost, you can certainly diminish the risk, even though there may have been high cost and high risk, but they'll look like they're nothing if what you get from it is meaningful in itself. And that's the paradox of that, is that if you do it right, you'll have a karma that makes sense, you'll have a trade-off that makes sense, you'll have something that doesn't have to be a a uh, contrary or c comparative uh, seismic ri uh, take on, if you know what I mean. I was going to say something else. I was trying to say contrary and I was going to say uh, cynical. Yeah, cynical. The idea that it has to give some kind of sacrifice. As people will say, we're responsible to demand sacrifice. I get that sometimes, but just. But you, you'll know when you pay a price. It doesn't have to always be about discomfort and, uh, and tragedy and all that. You, this comfort is good for gains and feeling your desires and feeling your your growth, but too much discomfort in itself can be a bad thing. So that may be, seem like an obvious cliche for others, but every, not everyone gets what, what you'll mean by discomfort being a good thing and you have gains and fueling your growth. And They won't understand that. They'll know that some pleasure can be bad, but not the ones that, that you would particularly be in line with damaging addictions. So, so the discomfort that's for fueling your growth is definitely good, even if it's too much. And if it is too much, of course you can pull back from it. But, but know the cost and the risk can be diminished completely, and I mean this in a sincere way. They can be diminished completely, if the rewards and the things you manifest and your desires, or even the things that do seem to matter or should matter, whatever it is, wherever it has to matter or is important enough to you to do something about it, if that is going to be more important to you than what the risk and cost could possibly be, they're virtually not even there anymore. And the paradox of that is meaningful because even if you still literally paid a hard sacrifice for something that was not worth it, you'll still learn something from that experience. And that doesn't have to be a tragedy or a discomfort that's something you can't bear. But even if you bear something that, that was heavy enough to be worth it, you feel good knowing that the way it was worth it didn't have to always be about losing something. If you have to lose anything to make something worth it, it doesn't have to be completely useless but know that there's a way to meet that match that equilibrium of feeling, uh, manifesting your desires and being successful or even happy and peaceful without feeling like you have to give something up in order to achieve that. Thank you guys very well. See you next time. Thank you very much. Bye. See you next video, by the way. Uh, next one, I'll probably do a, a claymation thumbnail of all the pops at once if I run out of ideas and then I'll have that as the final video for the phase I'm doing. Otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll scrub props and then have the uh, XP made props out, out, out in segmentations of each other, maybe together in the same thumbnails or in different videos. Otherwise, take care, guys.